Hey guys, Jer here, aka Me So Honey, back in with another video. And today we're going to be going over the top 10 cards here for Wild from Showdown and the Badlands. Now, I will say this this set was definitely a, a stretch here. I think this set and the last set here were definitely a little bit of stretches here. Uh, partially, I think, because of the Caverns of Time expansion uh, being sandwiched between them is part of it. And the other part of it is Wild is just, you know, at the point now where you have to be a pretty busted card here to make it into that meta here. So, obviously here, not all of these cards, are, you know, are cards that you're going to see on the daily basis. But I do think here the best card from the expansion, obviously, is Reno Lone Ranger. I think that's just a given. I think figured it was kind of a cop-out here to put at number one for both the wild and the standard videos. So let's get it out of the way. I'm not going to have it as the number one card in both videos, even though it's probably the best card in the expansion by far. Um, it's just super powerful and actually interacts with things that we haven't been able to interact with here. So this card probably is the, the linchpin of the set here. And it's just great value-wise, tempo-wise. This does everything really well. But here, let's go ahead and get into number 10 here. At number 10, we got Bartendo Bot, a Demon Hunter card here, a 2-mana 3-1 mech battle cry, draw an outcast card, and slide it to the left side of your hand. This obviously seems like it's super powerful in uh, Quest DH here, where it's drawing you a card, so it counts you know towards the quest uh you push a glide here to the far left side of your hand you can mess up your opponent's hand and really pop off without having to worry about them having an answer to your board um but is it going to pop up in every single meta no it is not here usually these quest dh decks here pop up in really specific pocket metas of control being the you know top echelon of the meta and right now i would not say that we have that right now so it's yet to be seen that this will see play but i do think at some point in time it will see play here and obviously here for demon hunter it's either at the top of its game or it's you know below average so uh it seems like it's one or the other never like sandwiched in the the middle here so this one's at number 10 at number nine here, I've got Misfire, uh, two mana warrior spell here. Deal three damage, two damage, and one damage to random minions. Quick draw, choose the targets. Obviously, this is really powerful on the quick draw ability, but even if you can't choose the targets here early on in the game on turn two, uh, you can play this and it acts, you know, sort of like a uh, minefield esque type card here, an additional minefield in your even warrior decks here and even warrior it's doing pretty solid right now in wild so that's part of the reason why this is at number nine at number eight here we got sneaky snakes uh nothing wrong with sneaky snakes here uh but wolpentinger and alley cat still see play in wild a ton and this is just a super powerful version of that here. Now, Wolpentinger and Alley Cat see play for other reasons too, especially Wolpentinger because of the copy ability is super powerful and cards like Devouring Swarm are really good for those types of cards to get additional copies of those cards. Uh, but overall, I think Sneaky Snakes does enough to uh, warrant a spot in that deck. I think those, that deck here was definitely playing some cards here that were just uh, pretty obsolete, I would say, here. But I do, you know, I like playing Beast Hunter in um, Wild here. But I think this just goes really well with cards like uh, Starving Buzzard and stuff like that here. Allows you to really pop off with that card more consistently. So I think Sneaky Snakes is at number eight. At number seven here, we got a little bit of an odd one, I would say here, and that's Gaslight Gatekeeper. A three mana, three, four, undead with battle cry, shuffle your hand into your deck, then draw that many cards. Now, a lot of people are gonna say, why not just play Finley? Well, in your Highlander decks here, you can't 
you know, play, you, if you want more of this effect, uh, especially in your Prince Renafall, you know, Highlander decks here, uh, getting multiple cards that do the same thing or similar things here is actually very important for those decks here. So that's where I think this is going to see play. The thing that hurts this card is that one, it costs two more mana. So the turn that you play this, you're not going to be able to uh, like really reliably have like more answers than what you would with Finley. Uh, and two, you're shuffling your hand back into your deck and drawing that many cards, which means you could draw the same cards over again. But uh, that's probably a rarity to happen, but you, some of the cards that you do draw are probably going to be the same. So uh, that's something to think about here too. And you just have a little bit less control of your deck here. Obviously with Sir Finley, you know where your cards are going. You know you're not going to see those cards again here for a little bit. So um, that's why this one's at number seven though. At number six here is Splish Splash Welp here. I think this card's going to see uh, a decent amount of play here. One, Druid is doing relatively well right now in, in Wild. It's definitely taken a little bit of a dip here since the, the Rake nerf. Um, but overall, I think this card is going to see a decent amount of play. Breath of the Wild still sees play, and this kind of just slots right into that deck here, uh, for especially for Highlander Druid here. So that's why it's partially at number six here. At number five here, we've got Furnace Fuel. So obviously we've seen Hand of Gold, or Golden and Hair see play uh, a ton in Wild here. This is similar to that, except it's a little bit cheaper and it draws one less card. Uh, however, it's a little bit different because whenever it's, you know, it's not just whenever it's discarded, it's also whenever it's destroyed. So that's also super powerful in that manner too because you just have a little bit additional synergies here, and that's partially why it's at number five here. At number four here, I think from here on out here, you could say that these are the cards that are almost guaranteed to probably see play moving forward here. And the first one, a little bit of a shocker, I think, is Cactus Cutter. Uh, two mana, two, two, battle cry, draw a spell. If you cast that spell this turn, Game plus one, plus two, and taunt, and it's a Murloc. Um, it's just efficient card draw on the stat line here, and you get a little bit of a bonus if you cast that spell too. Uh, but it's also something that fishes for spells in Totem Shaman that seems really good here, and, and spells even in Murloc Shaman here, because Murloc Shaman, I don't believe, plays like a super ton of spells here, so you can really narrow down what you want to draw, and that seems really powerful to me especially in a format like wild that's really wide and you can really you know get the the gears moving here on what you want to do with this card here so this card seems super powerful to me and that's why it's at number four at number three here we got more of a i would say a totem shaman card here which is trusted companion a two mana spell give up minion plus two plus three if it has a minion type, draw one of that type. So obviously, two mana, two, three, you know, two mana, five stats, draw a card is fine. We've seen, you know, the, the mana feed panther, panther as he play in even shaman here for a little bit last year. This is just probably slightly better than that here. So overall, strong card here. And I think it will probably see play moving forward. I think it will either be you know, this or Cactus Cutter, I think it's pretty hard to make room for both. Uh, so that's something to keep it in mind, too. At number two here, we got Ray Estraza here. Obviously here, Reno tools here for Druid are really good. And this one is just pretty obvious here. You get a good amount of value from this, uh, this card here. And it's a win condition on its own over time. It can get you back into the game, um, it can put you ahead of the game, and it can pull you even with the game here, so it's good at every level here. Now, the only bad thing about this card is it doesn't do anything to turn it comes into play. So, but luckily in Wild, we got 
a lot of ramp spells that can ramp you up to eight pretty quick. Get this down and start getting value from it. So that's why it's at number two. And at number one here, I have the Greedy Partner here, and I do believe that this card is going to see uh, a good amount of play across the board in Wild. Uh, this, you know, um, restriction is a lot easier to meet in Wild than it is in Standard. Uh, you can deck build more reliably and definitely uh, fludge out your deck here a little bit better in Wild here than in Standard. So. I think Greedy Partner goes into a myriad of decks, probably Miracle Rogue, probably Quest Mage, and all that kind of stuff here. And it might even see play in other mid-range decks here, just because getting a coin is fine. So this one, probably one to look out for here in quite a bit of decks here moving forward. But that's my list for Wild. I'll see you tomorrow here for the standard list here. And then shortly after that, the set will release. So yeah, there we go. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.